All right, well, for no particular reason at all, except just for my own personal entertainment, I thought I would document this project. I call this the Supersonic Swordfish, and it is a scratch-built rocket, which I've already flown once, and I'm gearing up for a couple more flights that'll end in a supersonic flight. This rocket has flown one time so far, and that was on a... CTI K735, which was in this case, uh, but it's only a, that was a two grain 75 millimeter skid mark that flew in this case. 75 millimeter. But I'm planning to go supersonic in this K1200 because it has a, that's a white thunder with much faster burn. It'll get up, get up to mock speed. So this is a minimum diameter scratch built rocket based on Wildman fiberglass. And this really cool aluminum fin can from uh, Max Q binder design. And I've also got a tail cone on. And you can see I have a standard Wildman fiberglass nose cone. Got a parachute, I think it's top flight. I've got a pretty standard av bay with a Missileworks RRC2 and an Altus Metrum Easy Mini. So two flight computers to have a backup. It has an Aeropack minimum diameter plug right about here. I think you can see the dark area, which is the epoxy and the 75 millimeter Aeropack minimum diameter retainer there that's epoxied in with JB Weld. So when I do fly it genuine minimum diameter, that's using these 75 millimeter cases. So I did that once with a two grain K motor. And what's cool in that configuration is I have this nice little tail cone shaped aft retainer, which uh, I got from CTI. So in that configuration, I, I put that on there, which is nice and minimalist because you just got the 75 millimeter case in there. And this is not a retainer. It's just the aft closure because you can see it's just going to press up against the base of the rocket which will be functioning as the thrust ring. So it's a nice little aluminum boat tail shaped aft closure. So that worked quite nicely. Then the top of the motor, of course, is held in by the minimum diameter 
retainer inside there. But for the current configuration with a 38 millimeter J motor, I have this 75 to 38 millimeter tail cone. It's also aluminum, which is from Aeropack. And it gives this pretty cool chrome look. I think it's cool anyway here with the tail cone and the fins with the cool rivets, the Max Q binder design fins. And then if all goes well with those flights, I may try to fly it with this five grain CTI 75 millimeter case, which would bring us up to an M motor. And I wouldn't want to try that till I've had several more flights because although this is a strong fiberglass minimum diameter rocket, I realize it's not carbon fiber, uh, but maybe it'll work uh, on an M motor. We'll see. I'm first going to try it on uh, the J. I've already tried it on a K735 skid mark, but I'm going to try again on a on a J, and then on this fast burning K1200 White Thunder, maybe also on an on an L. But if all goes well and I keep uh, moving upward in a safe way, then I may try it on the M motor, which would put it at about Mach 1.8 and potentially 24,000 feet. So we'll see about that. I'd have to go to another site where they have a waiver that, that that's that high. My area doesn't have a waiver quite that high, so I wouldn't be able to fly it around here. So that's a long-term goal. But in the short term, I, I plan to at least uh, break mock speed with uh, K1200. And this video is just for fun. It's my own personal entertainment. These are fun mock flights, but there are a lot of people out there with much faster rockets that are going higher and faster and you can find much cooler things out there on YouTube but for me this is a fun project and I thought I would just document it a bit for fun and I've had some other projects that went to mock speed so this is my Mac performance rocketry hyper 54 it's a 54 millimeter canvas phenolic rocket with the Max Q binder design aluminum fins, uh, similar to the fins I have on the other rocket I was just talking about, but this one is the 54 millimeter version, and this comes with the kit if you buy this from Mac Performance Rocketry. There's a sticker for that company, which is a really cool company, and this is a really cool rocket. And here's another one that also went mock speed twice. Uh, this one went to about 10,000 feet and Mach 1.2. A nice flight on a CTI K711 white. Going in five, four, three, two, one. Then again. How long does that burn? <laughs> but then I tried to push the envelope a little bit and I put in a CTI L935 IMAX, uh, which was going to go even faster and higher. The only problem is that it shredded as it went through mock transition, so this rocket ends right there now. And here's some of the wreckage from that flight. Here you can see what's left of the av bay, and amazingly, here's what happened to one of the quick links in that shredding incident. So that rocket is not going to fly again for a while. And Go 
going in five, four, three, two, one. But that's my fault for putting in, uh, pushing it too far with uh, L935. And so that's one of the reasons why I'm working on this other project, which is a 75 millimeter rocket with Wildman fiberglass.